Welcome back to Warped Perception. This is episode five of the See Through Engine series. If you haven't seen any of the previous episodes and you wanna watch those first, they're all in the series playlist in chronological order. If not, I'm gonna jump right into it and bring you up to speed. Now in the previous episode, I tried to blow this engine up by running nitromethane with aggressive timing and just pure RPM. And to my surprise, the only thing that happened is it blew a head gasket. Now this is the engine with new head gaskets installed, a new transparent head. Oh, and I changed the oil. That's how the oil looks from the last episode. Oh, that's strange. It's like, it's kind of like jelly. Look at that. Yeah, I don't know what that is, but that's what we have left over from the uh, nitromethane blow up attempt. I mean, there's some metal shavings and stuff in there, but Nothing really crazy. Now, before anything, I'm gonna start this engine up and show you that it's in perfect running condition before moving on. Cause that sucker has compression, look at that. <laughs> it's vaporizing. All right, as you can see, the engine is in perfect working condition, even after all the abuse. Now that we know the engine runs, I'm gonna up the ante and add nitromethane, aggressive timing, a turbocharger, and last but not least, a dyno, so we can measure the performance of the engine every step of the way and see which modification makes the biggest difference. First thing I have to do, build the dynamometer. I decided to go low tech and build a literal brake dyno out of a basic disc brake kit, some creativity, and a bit of machining. I think that my dyno design is gonna make it really easy for anybody to understand what horsepower is and how it's measured. This dyno is also going to allow me to load the engine as well as track the horsepower output through each modification to see which one is making the biggest difference. So the brake dyno is installed. And like I said before, this is a literal brake dyno. So I'm literally going to be measuring how much brake horsepower this engine is making. And if you're not familiar with what horsepower is, horsepower is work over time. And one horsepower equals lifting 33,000 pounds, the distance of one foot and one minute. To calculate the horsepower, we need to know how many foot pounds of torque it's producing. Now one foot pound of torque is created by one pound of force acting at a perpendicular distance of one foot from the pivot point. The pivot point here is our crankshaft. But in this case, the distance from the center point of that shaft to this pin up here is exactly six inches. Since we have six inches, whatever measurement that we come up with, we would just divide that in half and that would be how many foot pounds the brake is generating. And last but not least, the way that we're gonna apply pressure to the brake rotor is with this master cylinder right here. And the way this works is I kind of rigged this up so we can turn it and lock it into each position. Place your bets right now as to how much horsepower this engine is gonna make. So we're about to see. I'm gonna control the throttle while Diana gradually increases the master cylinder pressure, increasing the load on the engine until we get to that sweet spot and we're at the maximum amount of torque that the engine will produce. That was a pretty good run, especially considering that we don't even have a proper spark plug installed in the engine. I calculated about 2.5 horsepower and about five foot pounds of torque. Looks like the load 
does make a big difference because this right here is the first time that I've ever cracked a head. And there's even little tiny pieces of glass inside my cylinder now. Look at that. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove the transparent head and mount the stock head in its place. And this is gonna be a great comparison between the make do spark plug on the transparent cylinder head and the proper spark plug and proper compression with the stock cylinder head. Let's run it. Ready to go. Stock head, gasoline. Let's see how much power it makes. Okay, that was a great run. Now it's time for us to calculate how much horsepower the engine made. And unfortunately, I forgot to install a tachometer. I decided to pull the engine back into the garage. Install the tachometer that I forgot to install for that previous run and do one more run on gasoline with an accurate RPM measurement to get a good baseline on what this engine is making stock on gasoline. Then I'm gonna move on to the nitromethane. This is the tachometer that I'm gonna be using for this episode. And I don't know about you, but I like when I see a product being used in a real situation, because if I buy it, I know what to expect. And in this case, it's gonna get used and abused. And if it fails, it's gonna be on camera. If it doesn't, you know it's good. So if you're interested in buying this tachometer, I put a link in the description below because I see a lot of cool uses for this, including this one. Tachometer's installed, it looks fantastic. We're ready to do our first accurate baseline run on gasoline. All right, that's our background. Run number one, accurate baseline gasoline. All right, let's see how much power this makes. All right, so apparently I didn't account for this screw vibrating loose inside of this scale. I'm gonna put the scale back together and do one more run. It's always something. I'm gonna just get some red Loctite and fill up this screw, put this back together. Well, I definitely picked the right scale because this thing just went right back together again. Hopefully our scale doesn't break this time. Ready, baby? So that right there is almost exactly nine foot-pounds divided by two, which is 4.5 foot-pounds times 3,600 RPM on the money, which equals 16,200 divided by 5,252 equals 3.084 horsepower. That's pretty amazing that this thing, after all this abuse, is still making 
the rated horsepower. Time for the nitro methane. I just got to change the timing, put nitro in the tank and ready to go. Okay, so that was a fantastic run, pretty entertaining. And we're gonna calculate the horsepower real quick. We were at 4,000 RPM. We're gonna multiply that by our foot-pounds of torque, which in this case is 14 divided by two. So it's seven equals 28,000. And we're gonna divide that by 5252 to get our horsepower number, which is 5.33 horsepower on nitromethane. That was pretty impressive, 5.33 horsepower on nitromethane with just a little bit more timing and uh, I opened up the needle for the carburetor all the way till it was almost falling out to get as much nitro in there as possible. So for this next test, I'm gonna take the sequential turbocharger off of an SL65 and modify it to fit on this three horsepower engine. Okay, I have the turbo all installed on the Briggs. I mean, it looks like something I haven't ever seen before. I've always wanted to put a turbo on one of these engines and uh, yeah, it just never did, but now it's done. Put a spring on the wastegate here to keep it closed because I'm hoping to build some boost. A little viewing window here in the intake. The turbo is being lubricated by this loop tube. The only thing I don't like about the way this is set up is that I had to use a wet system, which means that I have the carburetor mounted to the turbocharger and the turbocharger is pulling in the air fuel mixture, compressing it, and then forcing it into the engine. I don't like that because this is kind of how the first forced induction cars were set up with this wet system. And there's a lot of problems with this system, but I think it's gonna do for this. And now that the turbo is mounted, modified, and ready to go, let's see what the engine does and how much horsepower it makes on turbo and nitromethane. Okay, so that run was kind of disappointing. We maxed out at about six foot pounds at 3,500 RPM, or actually three foot pounds because we divide that in half. So only three foot pounds at 3,500 RPM. No wonder why they don't use the wet system anymore for turbocharged vehicles. It made less power than the naturally aspirated setup. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try one more time tune it a little bit, give it as much fuel as possible, and uh, see what it does. Hopefully it makes more horsepower, uh, else it's gonna be really disappointing.
I heard the turbo, I heard the turbo start spooling up, making boost. Did you hear it? It was like, yeah. So that got me excited. I heard the turbo start spooling up. It was like, making boost. And uh, I mean, I don't know where all that oil burning came from. It could have been from the bearing and the turbocharger or from the piston rings. Maybe the piston rings are getting messed up. If you listen, the engine's kind of making a little creaking noise over there. So I don't know what that is. But with this run, it maxed out at about seven foot pounds at 3,650 RPM. And I don't know if that was that much better than actually aspirated nitromethane run. But let's do the math real quick and we'll see. So we got about uh, 3,650 RPM times seven foot pounds of torque. Uh, divide that by 5,250, that's our horsepower. So the numbers don't lie. Unfortunately, it only made 4.86 horsepower with the turbo on nitromethane. So that's kind of disappointing. I'm sure this thing will make way more power. But I'm going to end this video right here because this thing has taken just way too long. This was a lot of building and everything else. It didn't blow up. It didn't make more horsepower than the nitromethane alone. But uh, yeah, but if you want to see another video on this engine, I'll definitely do one. I'm thinking maybe just fix these problems because I'm sure that this thing has to be able to make about 8 or 10 horsepower with the turbo. That's just my guess. Uh, I don't know how I can get it to work. Maybe add a fuel injector some type of uh, engine management system maybe i'm gonna look around and see if there's a company that makes that and uh, maybe i'll bring it up in a in another episode it was kind of fun so let me know what you think thanks for watching hopefully you enjoyed that long painful episode and process of trying to get more power out of this engine but uh i think i maxed it out i mean putting a turbocharger and nitromethane and timing and all this on this three horsepower engine it still didn't blow up that's pretty amazing. So uh, tell me what you think. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Oh, it's going to be so cool. You know how many people have wanted to see this thing? Dynode on nitromethane? A lot. <laughs>